Hey, greetings. By the way, I'm on Facebook now, for better or for worse. There's a link below if you want to join. Facebook is where people go to talk about boring stuff like, hey, I just got off the toilet. <laughs> It's like, hey, great, thanks. I needed to know that. Um, that's why you have a really expensive computer, so you can join Facebook and uh, listen to other people talk about their bowel movements. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to hate this video or not, but it's going to be factual. I think a lot of people are going to hate this video. Big mistake Fujifilm's making. Well, I better not say that. It's not really a mistake. They are making a mistake. I've seen so many hundreds and hundreds of comments that the GFX 100, uh, which is going to be $10,000, is really expensive. And everybody that's made that statement is delusional, incorrect, and have made a fallacious, ignorant statement. And this is why you're wrong. There's actually many reasons why you're wrong. I don't know if you know this or not, but... There's actually a long list of reasons, but for example, the Mamiya Leaf Credo, a really, really old slow camera. That crusty old turd is $8,000 more than the super new modern fast, the world's first fast autofocusing. I don't really care that the fact, and of course IBIS is useful for medium format because shutter shake has always been an issue in medium format. doesn't matter if it's been digital or film, shutter shake is an issue, but I don't really care about that in relationship to uh, speaking about this, but the GFX 100 is actually extremely underpriced. And of course, the fact is, everybody that uh, says that the camera is expensive, the camera is not designed for you taking cat photos. However, in Fujifilm's defense, and all businesses are like this, they don't care why you buy it, as long as you buy it. If you can appeal to a broader market, then of course you're going to sell more units. The fact is is that $10,000 for this camera is not only cheap, it's extremely cheap. Let's talk about a really important factor that I've not heard a single damn person mention. And that is working output income or revenue generated from a product. Kind of like when you want to go to rent a, a shitty Toyota Camry it's like what twenty five dollars a day or something like that and if you want to rent like a rolls royce it'll cost you a lot lot more so the person that's renting out the rolls royce for example has a higher return on income for that particular product in use like if you want fabrication done um, 3d printing for example everybody and their brother has a, a 3d printer that'll print out uh, some form of a plastic medium but if you want uh, 3D printed uh, metal, whether it be magnesium or really, really expensive 3D fabrication, like there are uh, 3D machines that uh, print out uh, stainless steel. They literally liquefy stainless steel and it's an exotic process. And it literally 3D prints um, stainless products. Um, the GFX 100's return per, uh, per uh, job is infinitely higher than any DSLR, any Fujifilm other camera, crop sensor of course is any other Fujifilm camera. I'm excluding the other two medium format cameras. Um, people talk about phase one cameras being expensive. I actually had a person recently tell me, and I knew they were insanely slow, it said it actually destroyed his photography career for uh, quite a while because he actually bought it rather than renting the unit. And, it was so insanely slow on autofocus, which I knew was insanely slow, but he couldn't actually uh, autofocus on anything, essentially, was his summation. But there's going to be actually an enormous amount of people that are going to buy the GFX 100. And just because, and you're correct in making the statement that the, uh, you don't need a 100 megapixel, specifically 102 megapixel outfit for taking pictures of your family or taking it on vacation and medium format has never really been for that however in the early days of film and I grew up with medium format I mean that was the travel camera that was the family camera that was the take a picture of your dog camera I mean it was most things were twin lens reflex and uh, you know tons and tons of people had a medium format camera and the reason why nobody does anymore is because film is dead and medium format digital is insanely expensive 
but not now. Now we actually have a crossover medium format that approaches the speeds of moderate autofocusing DSLRs. And by moderate, I mean better than the autofocus speed, depending on the lens used, of a Nikon D500. And that's absolutely incredible. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but if you did a professional studio shoot, you had to use two different cameras. You didn't have to, but in most cases you did. You used a medium format on a tripod or a stand uh, for the high resolution stills. And if uh, someone wanted to do, you know, some uh, moving around or whatnot, then you grab the 35 millimeter uh, camera. And that's actually the same currently in digital up until the release of the GFX 100. You uh, used a uh, camera on tripod or on a mount. And then you uh, went and grabbed the full-frame camera when you wanted to do some like leaping action or some other exotic stuff because medium format is not for speed. It never has been. Um, this is going to change all of that. Um, it's not my opinion. It's a fact. For $10,000, the camera is actually incredibly cheap. Well, what do you mean incredibly cheap? It's a $10,000 camera. We're talking about people. There's going to be two types of people that buy this. People that have some decent disposable income that are going to use it for taking pictures of their cats and landscapes and travel. And that's fine. You know, you're not going to begrudge somebody that's worked hard and has money and going to use that for whatever the hell they want to take pictures with. Obviously so. And uh, secondly, it's going to be for people that use it to make money. You have to be realistic here. I mean, I keep saying compared to what? The Nikon D5 was a bit of a failure. And I'm, an, I'm a Nikon flagship lover. I have owned every Nikon flagship camera. I refuse to buy the Nikon D5. I mean, $6,500. Huh? So it's $3,500 more than a Nikon D500. The amount of revenue you could generate with the GFX100 will be infinitely higher. You use it for absolutely everything. The only thing that the GFX from all reports are, so far as autofocus speed with their faster lenses other than the stepper motor lenses like the 63mm and the upcoming 35mm pancake, is ultra high uh, speed uh, action and I mean close in ultra high speed action, which of course you know the X-T3 and um, the uh, X-H2 whenever that comes out next year obviously is going to be better than that for but I mean there's never been a medium format camera that even approach uh, being able to do that kind of photography with unless of course you could do that with film with medium format uh, with manual focus lenses but you had to set a focus trap and it's the same thing that digital medium format users including myself have to do now is you set a focus trap and you can actually do fast action but setting up a focus trap is you know it's a bit of a pain in the ass and of course it limits you but at least you get the shot but you actually have to plan it out ahead of time and of course snap it when the person swings right through or passes into the trap that's why they call it a focus trap so medium format users with the GFX 100 won't have to set focus traps anymore and at $3,500 more than a Nikon D5, which is quite meager, considering the revenue uh, uh, that you could turn over with that camera and charge the client, is substantially higher. It's not my opinion, it's a fact. Substantially higher than you could actually charge for uh, work done on the Nikon D5. Even a lowly wedding photographer could in not too many wedding sessions offer a package where you take ultra high resolution shots for posterity and of course there's all these different packages in wedding photography if you don't know that then you've never done wedding photography and you could offer a package where medium format shots are done I have a package of five shots of primary um, you know bride and groom cutting the cake I'm gonna use the medium format and it's X number of hundreds of dollars Within a very short period of time, that camera could easily pay for itself. And you can charge a substantially higher package, just as someone renting out a Camry versus a Rolls Royce, for example. $10,000 for that camera is not a lot. I'm sorry, all the hundreds and hundreds of comments I've seen say, well, that camera's $10,000. You don't need it for taking pictures of your cat. There are going to be people with disposable income that are going to buy that camera for taking pictures of their... And who gives a damn? It's their money. You know, they have the right to do whatever the hell they want. It's called capitalism and a free society. You know? 99% of the people out there with a pickup truck never use the damn pickup truck. You know, to stick stuff in. 
they have, they have like never used it, you know. That's something different. You got to encounter these huge ass vehicles on the road. There are people that never actually use the the uh, the transportation the bed of their trucks. Like, why did you buy a pickup truck? You don't ever transport stuff. Um, that's a different topic, but. And there's going to be people that are going to charge a substantially greater fee for their paid photography, whether it be product, commercial, event photography, wedding photography, portraiture, high-end portraiture, architectural stuff. And, of course, Fujifilm eventually is going to come out with a tilt-shift lens for the GFX series of cameras. Of course, they are. They know that. I know for a fact they are working on a tilt-shift lens. Just, there's just no denying it. It is happening. $10,000 is not a lot for that camera. At $3,500 more than a Nikon D5, you really are smoking crack if you think that's expensive. You really are. I don't know if you've priced other digital medium format cameras. Cameras way, way slower than the two current GFX cameras, both of which I own. Way slower. They cost way more than the soon-to-be-released GFX 100. So... All those statements are absurd, illogical, and unintelligent, and they are statements made from the position of, you know, I do photography as a hobby. I don't, I don't need that to take pictures of my travel. And you're right, you don't. But that camera is not aimed for that. That is exactly the very reason why Fujifilm has the X-T2, X-T3, X-Pro3, which I assume they're going to announce uh, sometime later this year so and by the way all of this actually harkens to the absolute undeniable fact that Fujifilm made the right choice by not going full frame they really did you're gonna have a medium format camera with all the speed better than an Nikon D500 I can make that bold statement for sure better than an Nikon D500 with incredible output with endless crop ability. So, yeah, $10,000 is not a lot for that camera. Those statements are unintelligent and uh, they're not made from a position of comprehension, to be honest with you. So, thank you so much for watching and wait for it. Fujifilm. <laughs>